In this video, I'm going to show you how to make custom layouts with CSS Grid. Let's get started. So to begin, I'm opening up a sketch project with several different layouts. All of these layouts can be designed with CSS Grid, and some of them are a little bit more complicated than others. The first design includes a large main area at the top, followed by three small content areas and then a footer at the bottom. The next one contains a nav bar at the top, and then four different areas of content followed by the footer. This last layout is a little bit more complicated because it includes a nav bar at the top, a sidebar that runs vertically, then a main area, and then content areas followed by a footer. All of these layouts can easily be created with CSS Grid. The way that I recommend approaching CSS Grid is first to open up Sketch or Figma and create a design layout for your project. Then once you have the design laid out, I would make grid lines on top of it. So I've already made grid lines to indicate where I want each column and row to begin and end. So I've added these lines and then once you have the lines, it's a little bit easier to see how you want your columns and rows to look. So then I added this column layer on top to indicate how many columns I really need in this project. So I have three columns and they're all going to be the exact same width. Then I made a separate layer for the rows. So there are also three rows for this project, but as you can see, there are different sizes for each row. So I think it's a little bit easier for you to get a grasp of it. If you make a layout, then you apply the grid lines and then the rows and then the columns to your design. So with CSS Grid, we can design vertically and horizontally at the same time. This is different from Flexbox in that Flexbox allows you to design horizontally, but with Grid, we can create a vertical and horizontal layout for our project. So we'll be able to determine how many columns we want and their sizes, and we'll be able to determine how many rows we need and their sizes as well. Then using Grid Area, we'll be able to set what content we want in each area of the grid. So now let's jump into CodePen and see how this works. So jumping into CodePen, for the moment, I have a link to a font that I'm going to use in the project. And then I have a div class of a container that has six divs of content. And they each just have the name of the content that's in it, just for visualization purposes. In the CSS, I have two variables, a radius and a padding. And then I have some basic properties for the container and for each content area, I just set a different color. This is the native way that HTML presents the content. Each div flows vertically and takes up the full width. In order to start making a CSS grid, first you need a container to basically wrap all of the elements that you want in the grid. That's why I have that div class container first that has all of these elements inside of it. Then in my CSS, I'm going to that container and I'm going to write display grid. Once I've done that, it allows me to make columns and rows inside of this container and then manipulate how this content flows on the page. I'm going to set a couple rows and columns so we can see how it looks. So I'm going to write grid template columns and then determine how many columns that we want. So first I'm just going to write auto, 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 which will auto size three columns on the page. We can see that this instantly transformed the way the content flows on the page because now we do have three columns that are automatically going to adjust depending on the size of the window. Next, I will set rows. So I'll write grid, template, rows, and write auto, auto. It doesn't really make a difference here because there were already two rows in the design. So instead, I'm going to make some modifications here. So let's say for that first row on top, we want it to be quite large and that second row, we want it to be a bit smaller. So we can use the idea of FR, which is fractional unit. So basically it will determine how much space is left on the page and break it up into fractions. So if I wanna write four FR, and then one FR, that first row will be four times as big as the second one. If I do four FR and then four FR, they will both be the same size. 
I'm going to make this height 100% of the viewport height so it really takes up the whole space so we can see better what's going on here. But basically I have them now both set to 1FR each so each row is the same size. But we can modify this and then make one maybe 8. So then this will be much larger than that row. For now, I will set that to 5 and this one to 3. I'm also going to want to include a little bit of space between each row and column. So we can write grid, column, gap, and indicate a gap here. Now we could do a percentage, we can do REM. That's a bit much, so let's make it 1 REM. You can make it pixels. You can make it a percentage. There are various values you can place there. And then you can also have a grid row gap, which follows the same parameters, pixels, REM, or percentages. You can also write the shorthand for this and just write grid gap, and that'll determine the column and row gap at the same time. You can modify both values with one property. Another way that you can place the grid template columns, we have it as 3 auto right now and I already showed you the FR, you can also set certain pixel sizes. So that first one maybe we want it to be 200 pixels, then we want it to be 100 pixels, and then that last one can just be 1 FR. We could just see what that looks like. So as this container grows, the first value and the second value remain consistent because we set it to pixel values, but that third column will change in size. You can also determine the size with percentages, but with CSS Grid, FR is preferable. So for now, I'm just going to actually write the shorthand. So if you want them all to be the same size, you could do 1FR three times, or auto three times. But instead, there's a shorthand for this, so I'm going to write instead, repeat, and then you indicate the numbers that you want to repeat. So I want to have three columns, and I want them to each be 1FR. So it'll automatically create three columns of the same size. Next, looking at our design, we can see that some of the containers, we want it to span multiple columns or multiple rows. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to really start laying out your content. So the default behavior for CSS Grid is to have each container take up one spot in the grid. But based on our designs, we may want one div to take up multiple columns or multiple rows. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. So we defined our columns and rows for the grid, as well as a gap. And so for that first piece of content, I have all of these divs in that one container class, and then I put IDs for each element. So now I'm going to look at that first piece of content and basically determine what rows and columns I wanted to take up. So I'm going to write grid, column, and then indicate what columns I want this to take up. So I basically wanted to start in that first column and maybe span that entire first row. So the way to do that is I'm just going to go back to my reference for a second. So essentially I laid out these grid lines and then I added these circles on top. So these circles indicate where each row and column begins and ends. So I have three columns here and so this one indicates the beginning of that first one. The two indicates where that second column starts then the third column, and then the fourth is where it ends. Same with rows. So that first line is where that row begins, where that row ends. So the second one begins here, then the third one begins here, and then the fourth indicates the ending of that row. So if we want this element to take up this whole space, it has to go from that first column to that fourth column. You can use these lines to determine how you want to split up the content on your page, and then if you number them, it'll be easy to identify where each div of content begins and ends. So in order for that first one to span that entire row, it has to start at one and end at four. So jumping back into my design, I can write grid column one dash four. And when I do, that first content area takes up that whole area one to four. If we wanted it to end here, let's say where content three ends right here, it would be 1-3. And then the rest of the content flows easily down the page. If we want content 2, let's say, to have a different row, we can go over here and write grid-row, and then write, let's say, 2 to 4. See what that looks like? 
So now this piece of content goes from the second one to the fourth one. So let's go back to our reference for a second. So it starts at the second one and it goes to the fourth. It'll be taller in height compared to the other two values next to it. So if we go back, we can see that this content takes up this second row and the third row. And you can also see how the content was reconfigured on the page. So now it doesn't go in numerical order. We have one, three, two. If we wanted to move content four to where content three is, I could go back to four and then say that I want this column to start at three and end at four. So I'm going to write grid column three, two, four. And then to move it up, I'm going to write grid row one to two. And when I do that, content then moves up. So you can easily reconfigure content on the page with the system. However, this numbering convention can be a little bit difficult to control and it can be a little confusing. So I'm going to show you another way to do this. So instead I'm going to delete these columns and rows that we set up. Instead, I'm going to do this another way, which I actually find quite a bit easier. So instead of doing it this way, I'm going to go back to my design and we're going to use the concept of grid template areas. And the reason why I like grid template areas is because you can use it to clearly label out your content in a very visual way. So it becomes easier for other developers to see how you laid out the content. So using grid template areas, we're going to essentially determine what content we want to be in each block by just writing it out. So I'm going to go back into my code pen and write grid template areas. And then I'm just going to start typing out what I want in each area. So let's say for this first one, we want content one to take up the full main area. So here I'm just going to write content one three times because we have three columns. And then I'll write content two. So I'm going to have content one span that first row completely. Then content two will be a little bit like a sidebar. It'll run down vertically. And then three, four, five, and six will just flow naturally. So to do this, we have to account for an extra row. Right now I only have these two rows defined. So instead I'll just write repeat three and one FR, so that way each row takes up the same amount of space. And now that we have the grid template areas defined up here, we have to just assign each div to that area. So the way that I'm going to do that is under that content one, I'm just going to write grid area, and then assign it to that name that I wrote in the grid template area. So I want it to be called content one there as well. So that's what I'm putting as their grid area, and automatically, this piece of content now fills up that first row completely, which directly maps to what we have placed here. I'm going to do the same for the other value. So here I'm just going to write grid area and then content two. I'm just going to follow the same procedure for the other values. Now the great thing about this is that this is actually a visual representation of what is happening on the screen. At any point, I can go back in here and modify this in any way I want. If I want to make that first content area run vertically instead of horizontally, I can just go back in here and modify the values. Then if I want that second content area to run across the top, I could instead just modify it right here and then it automatically changes the content on the page. Using CSS Grid, you can easily manipulate the layout of your page by just modifying the grid template area. Now, if you want there to be a blank spot with no content, instead you could just delete it and just write a period. And in that case, it'll just leave a gap. But this is a really easy and quick way to totally transform the layout of your site. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to create a nested CSS Grid. So another really great thing about this is that you can actually nest elements within a CSS grid as well. For that first content area, instead I'm just going to remove that content and then make other divs inside of it. And in order for us to see it on the page, I'm just going to add a background color to them and a width and a height so they're a little bit easier to see.
The four divs are placed on the screen, but they're placed one after another. So now they're all in this first content one div. So for that content one, I'm going to do the same thing that we did before. I'm going to write display grid. And once I do, it changes how the children elements look on the page. I'm going to define three columns and rows as well. And we can do the same thing that we did before and reference each div and then indicate how we want it to be displayed. So I can write grid column again and determine these values. Now, because the height and width are a set size, that's why it only appears to be in this one little area. So instead, I'm going to remove that and then modify the columns and the rows. So instead, I'll say repeat 50 pixels. And for the rows, instead of it being auto, I'm going to write min max, which indicates the minimum and then the maximum value that we would want of those rows. So I'm going to write 50 pixels and then 80 pixels. So I set that first one to a min max of 50 and then 80, and then the second one is 60. And again, to see a little bit of space between each element is a little difficult to see. I'm going to include a grid gap so we can easily see each div. The first div starts at one and goes to four, and then two and three flow naturally. So right now I have three columns, each of 10 pixels. That first row has a min max of 50 to 80, and the second one has a size of 60. And then we can justify and align the content. So if I write justify content, I can now place it in the center horizontally. And then if I write align content center, it will be placed in the center vertically. Now, because I have these set as particular values, it doesn't matter how big or small the screen gets, this remains the same size. So I hope you enjoyed this introduction to CSS grids. You can honestly do a lot with CSS grids, so I really like it to lay out the content for web designs. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.